Okay, so this next one has to do with to. So for this sentence, the past tense right here is future tense. It's, you know, to do, which is jumpu suru to bed no shita ni mogori komu. This is not a good sentence because this insinuates every time you jump, in this case, even if it's off the bed, you're going to crawl underneath it. It's always is what it's insinuating. Every time A happens, B is going to happen. So that's why you would not use that here. Where um, if you had just like jump step, mori komu, that could be that could happen. I'd be like, okay, you're just saying she jumps and she will crawl underneath the bed. But this right here insinuates every single time this could possibly happen, this should be happening right afterwards. However, if we're talking about past tense, it's okay to do this. This is okay because this happens right after this. So right after she jumps off the bed. It goes underneath it. So that's why you can say jump suruto bed no shita ni mogori konda because it just means immediately after she jumps, she goes underneath the bed. In past tense, it doesn't really correlation doesn't really matter with um to. As long as you're listing the events and the way they happened. The reason for this is that to works like a law of the universe and everything in the past past is not going to change so the things in the past are set in stone so everything's always going to happen in the order it happened so it should be an immediate as well so immediately is also really important with toll so you can't really have like this toll and then it'll be like five thousand years later maybe something happens it has to be like for sure a normally immediate consequences type of thing so te does not have immediate um, consequences. Um, for example, if you jump off the bed to crawl underneath it, but first you had to run around the house three times, you could still do this. These would both be okay. You can have a time delay between the actions. There should not be a time delay with to. So that's why you use to sometimes in past tense because you want to in insinuate Right afterwards, this happens. Understand. Okay. So right over here, I had a different sentence that had um to in it. Um, so that was Ishidatami no Michio Hadashi de Fumuto, which is um basically um I step onto the 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 path that is ro rocky. So basically, right when he steps on this path. Um, he realizes this information. Like he goes, "Oh, the it's very easy to slide on." So you could have this instead right here. This is okay with the fumi, because it's just a generic and. He just says, "I step onto the ground, and the ground is was very wet." These are both okay. They're just using this toll here to kind of make it more immediate. But both of these are grammatically correct. However. This one is a little bit weird, um, simply because the relationship between these actions are kind of weird. So I step onto the the road so it's wet. I guess if you want to <laughs> insinuate that it's, it's easy to slide on because he's barefoot, like if you want to focus on that, you could do this. But in general, it's a little bit odd to have this in deaf form here. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, as you like see more and more sentences, a lot of times you could use either and they're really just choosing one over the other for um, aesthetics. But yeah, you could not also use this tool for this one right here. It, it's a little bit weird. Um, just because of the immediate after type of connotation. Okay, how do you think this word is read? Teshita. Perfect. Teshita means minion. Just like Tesaki we saw earlier. Um, there's no That's real um, difference between the two. Um, what's the te form of Mitsuketu? Mitsuketa. Mitsuketa. Uh, yes. Um, what would be the Tao or the oh no form of Yararedu? Yara. Yarare chao. Yes, yarare chao. Perfect. Hi. 
So now we have a new grammar point, which is tada. So tada can be used for future events. But we're talking about the first time when something's going to occur. For example, natsu ga kittara nihon ni iku means when summer comes, I'm going to Japan. So this is not the first time summer has ever occurred, but it does mean the next time, the next first time, as I'm saying this now, that summer comes, this will happen. Um, this is also should. So it, you don't need to have something be 100%. As long as you're like in the 85% plus, tada is okay. So you, you would expect this would happen, but it doesn't have to be like a law. Like to is a law. Tada isn't a law. And this works great for just if you're talking about one occasion. So every single summer, I don't necessarily go to Japan. But for this sentence, we're saying the upcoming summer, the person will be going to Japan. So Understand. with this, you can like talk about hypotheticals that way. For example, I want you to try saying this long sentence, which is, if I am fined by that guy's minions, I will be done in. You do, you know how to make all the smaller parts of this, but this is a pretty long sentence. Um, so you would start with that guy's uh -huh. minions, and then it would be found by, then it's the if, and then it's the done in. That's kind of the order it would be in Japanese. Yatsini Oreo. Mitsuketa. Uh, tada is just ta form plus da. I forgot to tell you. Just a for a? Well, it, it's mitsuketa plus da. So that's that, that's tada. Mits, mitsuketa. Right. Um, uh, we'll be done in yare, yare chao. Yare, we'll be done in yare chao. Hi. Perfect. Yep. Yarare and, chao. Yes, yarare chao. And if I want to specify the guy's name, and you'd say yatsu no teshita. If you want to specify the minions. Oh, I forgot that. Yash, ya, yatsu no teshita. Hai. Hai. Perfect. Teshi ni. Yes. Um, teshita ni. Hai. Um, and this right here kind of allows for like two different like subjects. So I will be done in, and then these minions would be finding me. So Tada doesn't have to restrict. For example, I'm not coming to summer, you know, the, the summer is doing the coming and I am going to Japan. So you can have two basically subjects for the two different clauses. Um, our next word is Ido. Ido means like to move. But not like movement, like moving your body. It means to move locations. And it doesn't really matter how you move between locations. All it's saying is that your location is now different. So you could teleport, you could walk, you could fly, you could swim. The, the verb doesn't care. It has zero cares to give. Ido, it's just to move locations. Um, our next word is betsu. Do you know what betsu means? Betsu means other or yes. um, something else. Different and other. You're correct. Um, how could you turn ido into a verb? Ido suru. Perfect. Ido suru. And do you know how this guy's read? Betsu. Perfect. Betsu. Um, what's this, this sentence? Oh. What does the sentence mean? Can you read it for me? Yatsu wa ido suru. What does this mean? Uh, um, as for the guy, he move. Exactly. He, he will move. He will move to a different location. Perfect. So what, if I want to say a different magical stone, what particle would go between betsu and mado seki? Betsu no. Yep, correct. Mado seki. Perfect. Our next word is basho. You know what basho means? Basho is a location. Yep, a location, a place. Perfect. 
So what particle do you think would go in here? We got betsu no basho, question mark, idou suru. Betsu no basho ni idou suru. Perfect. Nice. That is the correct particle. We move to that location. Um, do you know what e means? E is the adjective for good. Perfect. And we'll skip that. <laughs> I was like, what's the te form of mitsukete? And I have mitsukete already in te form. <laughs> Get that. Hi. Um, anyway, temo. Temo. Temo is temo. a grammatical form that basically means even if, but um it's basically it's just te form plus mo. And with te form plus mo, and you have e at the end, so temoi or demoi, depending on the verb. This is basically is asking permission, especially with a question mark. So, um, mm. if I ask this with a questioning tone, that means, is it all right if I steal your magical stone? It can also, if if you just have it with a period, it would say, it would be good even if I stole a magical stone. Mm. It would be fine even if I stole it. So knowing I that, how would you say, it's okay if I'm found by that guy's minions? It'd be fine. It, and then there's the if in there, so... Right. Yatsu no te shita ni metsuke tara metsuke tara i in... So this would also be correct. <laughs> this would be fine as this. Yatsu no tisha ni mitsuketara i would be fine. But it is standardized to um the do this. Um, temo. Temo i instead. Just because if you're mm -hmm. um wanting i, it's basically standardized to do te i for this. So that's this is what you'd be expecting. So tara would be more insinuating one specific location. And temoi is more like in general, I would say. So with the tara, it would be even if I'm found, that'd be fine. But this is more just like a statement. It would be fine if I was found. So, well, <laughs> that's like hard. Because it is even if I was found. Even if I was found, it would be fine. And the other one is um, tara. When I'm found... It's good. So te plus e is more like it's okay or you're giving permission. With the tada, tada e is more like saying this is a good idea. It's like thumbs up. You should do it. <laughs> that would be the best idea. Um, Can I link this idea with um, nara or is that something we'll cover later? Because um, I remember something. Nara is also if, right? Yes. So nada and tada are, you know, you're right, both ifs. Nada is used for um, two things, I believe. One thing is re-telling re people what the subject of the sentence is. So someone's like, oh, he's so cool. And you're like, if you're talking about Sam, I think he's ugly, would be how nada could be used. And, and it's very much um, opinion-based. That, that's the nada thing. So E would work good with nada. Tada isn't really opinion based. Um, it's kind of factual, like plans and like things like that. But nada is 100% just like, well, if Sam's going to the party, I'll go to the party as well type of um, <laughs> talking. You couldn't really use tada for that. That it's tada is that that'd make that'd be too wishy washy. Not not a not a lot more wishy washy with the opinion affecting things. Um. So you definitely can't have not a e in a sentence. So that'd be like, well, if it's Sam, then that's okay. Like, if it's fine if Sam kills my parents because you love Sam or something in an, in an anime, that'd be like, <laughs> you know, from something. Hmm. <laughs> um. Hi. 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 <laughs> Got uh, it. So, so many ifs. So too many ifs. Um, there, there's too many ifs in Japanese. 
uh, compared to English anyway. But yeah, E is good. And when you conjugate E, about 90% of the time, it's no longer going to be E. It's going to turn into yoi. So E in ta form is yokatta. So this is was good. Um, do you know what keredo means? Keredo, however. Yes. So if you say... And then I, yeah. I also heard keredo mo a lot. Is that true? Right? That sounds right. Uh, wouldn't really be any different than keredo. You're just kind of adding more things. However, but more. Keredo mo. More. That doesn't sound wrong. Um... You also see kedo. Um, kedo and keredo are the exact same word. It just is like the preference of when whoever's talking wants which. Theoretically, keredo is slightly more polite, but you will see people use both in like the same couple of sentences. So uh, it's not really um, different. Or like dakedo, keredo, they're all, all kind of the same. So kiredo mo was more like the show up if you're going to say but and you're wanting like to continue your sentence, I believe. Kind of like in a so kind of way. Or even though you say that. Um, okay. Demo uh, yokatta kiredo is used when you're saying it like should be, it should have been fine, but it's not really fine. So it's kind of like, so demo, even if, so mado sekyo no sun demo yokatta kiredo. It's basically, even if I steal a stone, it should be fine, but kind of how it goes. So it's anyways, it's probably not okay, but it would have been like, it would be okay in a different occasion than the current occasion you're saying the sentence. So like, Hi. for example, but there's a guard outside or, but my teacher is mad at me or something. I see. Um. So yeah, all you do is have yokata rather than e and add keredo. So how would you say it should have been fine if I was found by that guy's minions? I think this is a, basically a very good way of politely um, turn down a request or something, right? It, it would be. Whenever they say, oh, it's good, but then I can't go, yeah. something it, like that. It'd be um, like a politish way, but at the same time, um, you'd want to have... Um, it's like politish to like an, an, a friendly acquaintance, so not polite to like a boss. <laughs> I it. see. You, you have to have I a see. different um verb form at the end, but that would be the type of way you would politely say that wouldn't be good. But yeah, it just has to do with I like see. how verb ends insinuate your relationship with someone. So it's a polite way to turn down somebody you kind of know. Got it. Got it. So it should have been fine if I was found by that guy's minion. Yatsuno. So let's go look at what grammar part we're looking at. Uh, okay. So a demo. So misukete mo yokata keredo. Perfect. Okay. Do you know what the te form of ido sudu is? What the te form of sudu? It's an irregular verb, so it can be hard. So it's ido shite. Perfect. Hi. So our next um thing we're learning is this guy, which on its own is pronounced as um kimi. And it has Wait. lots of meanings. You most common meaning is you, but theoretically it can also mean the master of kind of Hi. kimi um it also shows up as kun at the end of names um the, the kanji literally had the two pictograph it's literally mean master it's the hand holding a stick and a mouth <laughs> so you give command with your mouth and you give command with your hand holding some kind of a stick or a weapon right so yeah in this context it's the master using for this word but how do you think this is pronounced so, uh, so it's hikure. Yep, hikure. No kimi. Yep, kimi. So hikure is twilight again. 
So this is the Master of Twilight. Um, the English version of this book of the book calls this the Underlord. Um, in case, in case you're curious, but said to call him the Man of Twilight, the Master of Twilight, the Lord of Twilight, whatever you'd like. Any of those kind of fun He of Twilight. All our fun Does the word Kimi have um, a derogatory connotation to it? If you say Kimi wa, so if you say like, it, so if you use, so whenever you refer to somebody as you, that is always going to be rude in Japanese because if you cared about them, you would learn their name. I see. Uh, that, that's how to think about it. <laughs> what do you like mean you always forget? <laughs> you just don't say and their I'm name. Screw. Yeah. <laughs> just, just just don't say the name. Just just talk around it, you know. You can drop the subject, so that's that's what you should do. Just drop it. Like just kinda make aggressive eye contact and say the sentence. <laughs> Disappointing. Um but like so, so that's why instead See. you won't you won't say like Kimi no Namaiwa. You might just say Namaiwa. So na Maiwa. Like what's your name? Nawa? Something like that. You just would say the name is. You so a lot of times you wouldn't really have Kimi with it. Kimi no Nawa. Though that is the name of an mm. anime. Kimi is the politest way you can say you. So in an emergency and you have to use you, you should use Kimi. Every other you is much ruder than Kimi. So like Omae oh is rude, Kisama is rude, Teme is super rude. They're all very rude. Anata is weirdly we rude. Like Anata is okay to use with from the wife to the husband. That's like <laughs> that, that's it. Anata's the married you. Um so you hardly ever use the word you ever. In Japanese, yes. Let's see. It is to be avoided. Okay, now you're ready for our long okay, before you read this. This she right here, I forgot to teach. Um, this is a way to say and, but in an example kind of way. Like you're listing examples for things. This is an example for the first part of the sentence. But it, it'll make sense in context. But it's not translated as anything except for and in um, English. It's just the reason why it's used this and versus any other and in Japanese is because this is an example. Hi. Hi. Now let's go read our long ass sentence. Yes. This one is... First one is Machi. Machi. I'm sorry. Machi no betsu no basho ni iro shite mo yokatta kere do hikure no kimi. Ni owareru midashi Yatsu no te shita ni mitsu kata ra Goten pan ni yarare chao yarare cha chimao. I'm sorry, yarare chimao. Perfect. So let's go okay. part with the first half of this. Machi no betu no basho ni idou shite mo yokatta kere do. So what do you think it he's saying? It should have been okay. It should have been good. Um, that it should have been good to move to another location. However, exactly. Um, higure kimi ni. Yep. What's Higure again? I'm sorry. Uh, Twilight. Um, Twilight. Higure. No. However, the Lord of Twilight is chasing after me. Hi. And. Uh, thus. Yes. Uh, Yatsuno. Uh, thus, his minions will fi will find it. Thus, if his minion find me, uh, con. Koten pan is like beat up, beat up. Yes. Uh, will beat me up completely. Exactly. Perfect. Will sure will surely beat me up. Yes. Yep. So these are here. The she's here. Um, not totally because of this one, though it is a little bit like that. But yeah, this is just 
the reason why that she's actually the reason why it would have been good, but it's not good. So that's why the she's here right. is for this and actually versus the Zex and. Um, though they they are that the sentence it is um, that that is why the, his minions will hit him. But the reason why the she specifically is here is for the kid adult part. Kid adult. Hi. Perfect. So that you did that so good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've improved. Yeah, that that was amazing. That, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I've actually noticed that I can.